What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda for the NES. In the last episode, we finished off the third dungeon and did a little bit of side questing and get some money. But in this episode, we are going to take on the fourth dungeon, and we are going to upgrade our sword, find the power brace, and finish off the heart containers that we can find in the overworld. So, that being said, let's get going. Alright, so coming out of this dungeon, we're going to go left off the screen, avoid some moblins, go on up, to the right, and we're actually really close to the uh, next dungeon, so it's actually pretty convenient. We just got to cross this bridge and avoid this one Octorok, which surprisingly in my practice runs has given me a bit of trouble. And now that we have the raft, we can surf across to this little island where we can find the next dungeon. So now, we are in the dungeon, The Snake. And, uh, I'm sure you can imagine why it's called The Snake. And, um, we're gonna enter this room on the left here because we need a key. And, like always, we defeat some keys for keys. And, come on, this one pesky little keys. Ah, <sighs> finally. <laughs> All right. So now that we have that, we're going to move into this northern room. Also, um, this dungeon introduces a new, like, interesting mechanic where you actually have to light up certain rooms. So you'll notice that the room is all dark, so we need our blue candle to light it up. And these new enemies here are called Vires, and they're really annoying because they bounce around, and darn it, I got hit by that. And when you hit them, they if your attack isn't strong enough, they split up into a bunch of red keys. And red keys, in reality, aren't any different from uh, blue keys. It's just that they're really uh, annoying of enemies. So, one or three enemies on the screen, which happen to be Vyres, could turn out to be six or eight individual keys flying around everywhere. And it, gets, it just gets really hectic really fast. So, I'm going to be getting rid of those, hopefully. Um, also, they don't drop anything. So, it's not like they can even be of any use, really. So that's, they're just kind of frustrating, annoying enemies. They look like a mix between, like, a dog and a bat and, I don't know, just interesting looking enemies, I guess. Also, something cool I found out while I was, um, like, researching around on Zelda. In this game, the game actually keeps track of all the different, um, or the number of enemies you kill. And it has a short little counter that, um, like, keeps track of how many enemies you kill. And on certain numbers in the counter, when you defeat certain enemies, they'll drop a uh, specific item. Just interesting mechanic. Um, I was kind of surprised, but... Sorry, we just lost our sword beam, which is going to make this part a little bit more difficult. Just because we can't go on that water, and it's a very narrow path. But, so far we're doing alright. We do not want to go north just yet. We want to get rid of this keys, so we can go all the way to the right. And in here we have another new enemy, and we are going to switch to the boomerang actually, because we have to deal with like-likes. And no, that's not me just stuttering, that's the actual name, it's called a like-like. And they're really annoying enemies, because if they, like, if you come into contact with them, they steal, or not like steal, I guess you could say like eat, your shield. So, remember spending, or collecting rupees and spending 90 of them to get the shield? Or if you didn't know about the secret, having to spend 130 or even 160 depending on the shop. Well, if you run into one of those, it's completely gone. And there's no way of getting it back. In later games, you can actually like kill the like like to get it back. But nope, not in this one. No mercy from Miyamoto. But, alright, and here we have the step ladder, which is actually going to be really helpful. It allows you to travel across like gaps or um, I guess spaces like that. <laughs> one, one tile with spaces. So, makes this room a lot easier. We can just walk right across. I don't want to deal with this fire. Get out of here. And I already lit up this room once for you guys, but there is a small little moat that we can now get across, and we're going to shoot him all the way to the side of the screen so we can go through this door. And we have more fires. But we don't need to deal with them right now. We're just going to go to the right room. Which, unfortunately, is dark. And this is why we didn't enter the north room uh, and use the key in the other room. 
because if you did, you would just be stranded there and it would have been a waste of a key. But because we entered through here, we can get the map and now you can see it looks like a snake, which is pretty cool. Although, I mean, I guess <laughs> it's, uh, it's pushing it for a snake, I guess, but oh well. Give him a little leeway. It was the NES. And now we meet our good friend Manhandela. But unlike the last time, we are not going to be blowing him up with these bombs. We're going to be blowing up this wall with bombs. Nice little shortcut. And a room with a bunch of rupees. Yeah, get money. <laughs> um, and we continue using these bombs. And that's a nice little shortcut. It allows you to skip quite a few rooms and save some keys. Now in this room, we are going to want to take out these vire which are really just annoying enemies. They're bouncing around, it's like they're taunting you. Now that I think about it, they have like four eyes and they kind of remind me of an alien from Ben 10. I don't know if any of you guys watch Ben 10. I certainly don't remember its name. You guys could let me know. Or if even like uh, a picture or something. Or It was, I guess it's just interesting. They're also like gargoyles. I guess they're just a mix of enemies. Alright, and so now you can hear him roaring. We are at the boss, Gliok the Dragon. And he's actually probably the most difficult boss, or, well, not the most difficult, but one of the more difficult bosses in this game. Um, because if you don't have your sword beam, it becomes a nightmare trying to actually hit him, because you have to get really close and uh, hit one of his heads. I know that when you hit the head, it, um, his body flashes, but it's actually the head that takes damage. So don't be fooled by that. So after you defeat one head, one of them flies around and you have to avoid that. But he was no match for the hero of time. And we have another heart container and another piece of the Triforce. Now that's what I'm talking about. All right, that much closer to saving Zelda. All right, so we are not going to stop the episode there, because that would be a really short episode. So, we're going to do a little bit of side questing, and we're going to start off by getting a couple heart containers, because we want to upgrade our sword, but to do so, we actually need to have 14 hearts. So, there are two of them left that we can get. We actually could have gotten them before we went through this most recent dungeon, but the thing is... It, they're so far out of the way, and the dungeon is literally right there, so we're just going to do them now. So we're going to come all the way up here, and sadly enough, after we get the upgraded sword, we're going to be coming back here for the next dungeon. Just a lot of backtracking and traveling through Hyrule. It'd be nice to have a Pona in this game. <laughs> or a Pona. I don't, I don't know how to say it. I know a lot of people say it differently. It's kind of funny as... um. I actually just recently started up a file in Ocarina of Time for the 3DS, and it's an awesome game. I absolutely love it. I'm totally hooked. And uh, I'm trying to get Epona right now. I was, I finished getting all the spiritual stones last night, and wow, it's been such a long time since i played that game. So, we're almost there. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Yeah, I know. I can understand. <laughs> um, here's one area where another area where we can use the raft and it looks like we're going to another dungeon but it's actually another cavern where an old man is trapped on this poor island poor old man they just wait in these caverns just for us I guess that makes us really special but alright so there's another heart container we have 13 hearts and we are going to dodge these Octoroks and nice double kills I'm just on top of my game. And, uh, spoke too soon, I guess. And we can use the stepladder to get across there. So that's pretty nice. And you'll notice we're going to do a little loop around back to where it all started. Oh, man, these Octoroks are getting the better of me. I literally just slayed a two-headed dragon, and these little Octoroks are getting the better of me. Also, um... I was talking about how like certain enemies drop uh, certain weapon or certain like items, I guess, after uh, like at a certain count, a certain number in the enemy kill count. Also, if you kill ten enemies in a row, you actually drop the uh, five rupees. So that's one way to know it. And I think it's like after twenty-six um, kills, every kill 
like produces a fairy. That's without taking um, damage, of course. So, just an interesting little fact I certainly had no idea about. And you'll, this is a little bit reminiscent of uh, episode one. We're actually gonna go back to square one. Uh, this place just holds some nice memories. Anyways, we're gonna keep on moving. We're actually gonna go to a place that's very similar to the Lost Woods. Um, because, well, actually, it basically is the Lost Woods. If you make a wrong turn, you keep getting the same screen and everything. But it's right by the, um, old lady with the potions. So we're gonna go back to this screen. And, ooh, a heart. That's what I'm talking about. Go north. Once you see the little lake, we're gonna head left. And you should see the orange, brownish trees. And do -do -do. Avoid the moblins. Just don't have time to deal with them. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ooh, bombs, always helpful. Bombs are really overpowered in this game. It's kind of funny. So, what you're going to want to do here is you want to go left, and then up, once these moblins go away. So we go up, and then left again, and then down, and then left again. And you should hear the little chime, and that means we did something awesome. So, these enemies are relatively powerful, so we want to avoid them, and now we are in the graveyard. Those enemies are called Gini, those little ghosts. Pretty cool. And, um, if you run into the graves, they'll activate, like, another Gini. So, I would just say watch out for them, I guess. The magical sword is actually going to be really helpful against those enemies, so we're just going to try and run past them for now. Now, fork in the road. We'll take the path less traveled, and good path. So we see these eight Armo statues here. We're going to want to activate this one here, and once it moves out of the way, we can get the Power Brace, which uh, is the equivalent of Link's steroids. They get Link all big and buff, so you can move bigger items, boulders, and stuff like that. So that'll be helpful. And now that we've done that, we are going to return to the graveyard after... Whew, dodging some of these swords, bobbing and weaving like a boss, if any of you watch Minnesota Burns. But, we can take out these Gini, the ones you actually activate from the graves though, um, are I don't think you can actually hit, or at least with the white sword. So we're going to move that out of the way, and the old man again, maybe he just was buried alive and he's just been chilling here with the magical sword, that's why he's under a grave. But Alright, now we have the magical sword, which is pretty powerful. So that's going to be really convenient. And now that we have the magical sword, we are going to head to the next dungeon and call it at that. And we are, we are just moving along in this game. I can only imagine, Link's, Link gets a lot of exercise traveling all across this land. Probably put, probably give Lance Armstrong a run for his money. And so, you know how I said earlier that we were going to be going back to that one area, um, like the sandy area, on the way to getting the two heart containers? Well, yep, we got to go all the way back there now. Here's a great fairy fountain. We can heal up so we can get our sword beam. And this is like back towards the, like where we were towards the beginning of the game. But we're going to keep on going. And we really don't even really need rupees anymore. We are so set on rupees. <laughs> I guess Link just likes coming back here. We've been here so often in this one episode. What's kind of funny is that one Octorok that spawns on the screen oftentimes can spawn on the raft, like, or the dock. So that I've come back from the fourth dungeon and literally just been hit by the Octorok right on the dock. And then I haven't had the choice because because of the knockback, it sends me back to the dungeon. And, uh, trust me, that's that's a little frustrating. And we get hit, but we still have our sword beam, so that's okay. Hopefully we get it back, cause, or hopefully we don't lose it. And I lose it as I say it. Come on, no hearts. Darn it. That's alright, but we are almost at the dungeon. 
Um, it's kind of cool. The Lost Woods and this dungeon have some like similar have a similar effect. It's a screen that looks the same um, if you go up or down, or if you go up. But so it feels like you're not really moving anywhere. But in reality, if you move north, I think four times, you will like hear the Zelda chime, and you'll get the to the next area. So here we are. We are going to go to the left of these eight Armo statues. And you'll see this screen here. You're going to see the screen a few more times because we're going to go north. We get the same thing. We're going to go again. We're going to get the same thing. We're going to go again and see the same thing. And so most people give up by now. But if you do it one more time, we are at the next dungeon. So, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next episode. But until then, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.